we are almost closing one month and uh, we thank god for all the good things that god has blessed us with maybe we don't realize certain things when we are blessed with it but when something is withdrawn from our lives or when something is plucked away from our lives or when something is slowly withheld from our life that is when we realize the value it could be money it could be health it could be certain blessings it could be something that we thought it is always with us it could be even the relationship that we share a harmony that we share between the spouse or maybe between the children and the parents or between the neighbors something that we always think or something that we've taken it for granted but when something goes wrong that's when we realize how much we need god's grace how much we need god to really be with us so that we don't fall into the trap we don't get into that unwanted scuffle we don't get into that unwanted unwanted stress that people want us to get into or trying to push us into this morning we are going to thank be thankful to god for the eight months that god was so good the ninth month is also going to come to an end and we are going to get into the last few months of this blessed year maybe there are many unanswered prayers maybe there are questions that you don't have an answer even the greatest prophet may not be able to give you an answer as to why things didn't go the way that you wanted to or why things went wrong because you never wanted it to go that way but it went wrong maybe something that you're very troubled about but this morning we are going to ask god to speak to us in all the noises and in all the voices that you heard over the past one week we are going to tell god to speak to us through the word that was written many years ago but let the word come alive this morning let it let the word minister to each one of us present over here so that we would be assured that god is surely working in our lives let's pray god we thank you for this morning we thank you for giving us the strength in our bodies we thank you for the health we thank you for giving us the grace to wake up and to get ourselves groomed and come into your house lord lord we've come here maybe to confess something we've come here maybe to say that we did not really fulfill the vow we've come here to tell you a big sorry or maybe a thank you for something that has gone wrong or something that has gone good lord we come we've come here we pray that you'd be with us to bless us in jesus precious name we pray amen the bible tells us about a wonderful verse that we always claim it is found in the book of romans chapter 8 verse 28 everybody knows it by heart it says anything that happens for them those who love god happens for good maybe we claim the verse something goes wrong maybe there's an accident maybe we lose something maybe there's an, there's an unwanted expense maybe there was a theft or maybe there was a health loss maybe something has gone wrong we always take it in a positive way we claim this verse or maybe somewhere we've heard we've read these verses and we say god whatever has happened has happened for good maybe our spouse maybe our parents maybe pastors maybe somebody around us they would sit down to us and tell us don't be grieving about it don't be unnecessarily going through the stress don't unnecessarily stop or break the next blessing because god has not allowed this a god has allowed this because god has something nice for you because he loves you but the man who wrote this if you read two verses before he is very confused he is very bleak about the whole thing he says i don't even know what to pray i have my life ahead i have ministries to go through i have so many challenges i have my enemies who are waiting to kill me i have challenges from within as well as people from outside but he says i don't know how to pray i don't know what to pray and that's when he tells us but don't worry don't lose hope just because you don't know how to pray for this problem just because you don't know how to overcome this just because you don't know what is that god wants me to talk to him how is that god wants me to address this to him what is god's expectation from me maybe paul was also like that you and i are simple believers maybe we are born again believers maybe we are baptized believers but paul was a great he was a bulldozing bull believer and this man tells you and me he openly confesses and admits in the book of romans chapter 8 verse 26 he says i don't even know how to pray i don't even know what to pray but he says the spirit of the lord intercedes for intercedes for us friends there are many times even men of god go through an uncertain moment maybe men of god also today you are very worried maybe you are worried about your children maybe you are worried about your retirement plans maybe you are worried about something that needs to happen in the immediate future as well as in the future that is ahead of you and when you look at it it looks so bleak at times you are scared at times maybe you are a man or a woman of faith maybe you hold on to god you are not a professing person you are not somebody who says i believe in christ you don't 
stand on a podium or you don't stand on a street corner and you confess or you preach to people maybe you are a very simple and a subtle person but you are a very strong believer but in all these things i want to talk to you about somebody who went through a very shaky period the bible tells us about john john is now captured now john is captured and he's exiled into a small little into an island this island is known as patmos in patmos he does not have anybody to speak to maybe people talk about the andaman jail people talk about presently there's a lot of talk about tihar jail where the congress president and the vice president the second in command had visited a leader maybe there are many prisons maybe few people say we do prison ministry over here there is a juvenile home over there maybe you and i have heard about lot of prisons but this prison is very different it says he was exiled and there was nobody to talk to who would have served him food who would have taken care of his old clothes or soiled clothes who would have ministered to him maybe he's an old man he needs some care he needs definitely now as little children neonatal children i mean neonatal care is there these people also need some care as they grow older and older they need somebody to always be with them not for anything big at least to talk to them at least one one little sense of security or one little sense that somebody is there i'm not alone because they're already going through a fear of fear of death they're already going through a lot of fear but my bible says this man by name john is left all alone and one day he is now looking at the heavens now he is now looking at heavens he wants to know what is happening i just want to know what's happening maybe you're bored you switch on the youtube you switch on the tv you switch on the news channel you switch on some you flip through some facebook post so that you will know something has happened or maybe you go through your whatsapp whatsapp your school group or your college group or your friends group and you want to know if somebody's updated something is there any new news that i can share it with my people or my inner groups maybe you go through similarly in the book of revelation chapter 5 my bible tells this man by name john he looks at heaven and when he looks at heaven he he listens to a very depressing conversation he looks at the heaven and he says and i saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written he is now looking at the book he is now looking at the book and what is written on it and now he sees about the seals he sees about all those things that are happening over there and after that now there's an angel that comes comes and says with a loud voice it says now who is worthy to open this book now the book has seven seals it is now as your password encrypted as your phone or maybe apple is the safest phone that's what people say or maybe certain servers are very safe even these chinese hackers find it very difficult that's what people boast about but here this man is now listening to something that's happening a conversation in heaven today you and i know if somebody says it is very days for difficult it is very 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 tough it is is impossible what do we say take it to god in prayer now let us tell god now god is there in heaven god is above all your boss god is above your financial need god is about the report that the doctors have given god is above all these things we always claim yes on earth we are in we, we at times we don't we, we cannot help ourselves but there is a god who helps us and now this man all that he listens is there is a helpless situation in heaven and why is this helpless situation because now the angel says now who will open in this book the book is sealed and there are seven seals it is absolutely secure and now the reply is nobody can open this book this book it is going to be very difficult nobody not a man from earth not a man in heaven nobody can open this book and now this man by name john starts crying he is so depressed yeah there is a helpless situation in heaven sir there is an sos there is a problem at heaven i was thinking only on earth we go through suffering i was thinking only on earth we go through all these tough situation now look at heaven there is even more tougher situation because in heaven the highest authority says there is nobody on earth there is nobody in heaven to open this book there is nobody to open this scroll and you know what this man by name john says it's all over and he starts crying he starts weeping that's what my bible says john a man of faith john who challenged kings john who was ready to face any army john who was like bold as a lion now this man buckles down he looks at a helpless situation and he says if in heaven nobody can open this or on earth nobody can open this who's what is going to happen to the poor soul of mine this man starts weeping and you know something the bible says somebody came and told him don't worry don't cry 
Yes, we told you there is nobody on earth. Yes, we told you there is nobody on heaven. But don't worry. Don't cry. First, stop weeping. Because now the lion of Judah will come. And now this man now gathers his strength. And he looks for a lion. He is now looking for a lion which is majestic. He says, now the lion of Judah is going to come. Maybe he is looking like a giant sized lion. A very healthy lion. Like the Simba. Or maybe like the Simba's father in the Lion King movie. Maybe it is so gigantic, the face and everything. Everything is so very different that it looks like the king of the jungle. Now he must be looking and he must be waiting for something extraordinary on, on in heaven. But the Bible says, after some time, there comes Jesus. The Bible says, he comes like a lamb that was slain. It was an utter disappointment. He would have expected some lion. He would have expected something very strong. He would have expected something supernatural. He would have expected some great animation, VFX on earth. I mean, from earth in heaven. But unfortunately, all that he saw was he saw a lamb that was slain, a lamb that was already bleeding, a lamb that has already gone through severe stress, a lamb that's gone through so much of anxiety. Now this lamb comes there and everybody in heaven says, don't worry, you're looking at something big to happen. Maybe your expectation is very different. Maybe you always think, if this happens, that will happen. Only if this happens, that can happen. Only if this is there, I will be able to get there. Only if this is there, people will respect me. This is our human interpretation. That's what John also did. Maybe he was looking at a big thing, but there was an assurance from heaven. It says, don't worry, there is a lamb that was slain. But this lamb that was slain is worthy enough and this lamb will do the job. My dear brother, my dear sister, maybe today there's a lot of disappointment in you and me. We wanted certain things to happen in certain ways. We planned it so very well. We always prayed about it. We always thought God will surely assist us. God will bless us. Such and such a time, I will finish this task. In this time, I will finish this role. By this time, I will get into this genre. All these things, we always had a timetable for us. But unfortunately, when you look at the timetable, the nine months is a messy picture. Nothing really has gone right at all. Everything you wanted to go right has gone right wrong and it has gone terribly wrong and now when you look at the whole situation you're very worried is there any point in trusting this God is there any point in really praying about it or God helps only people who help themselves or should I do something in my life should I really take it to God maybe you're very troubled the Bible says there were two people now we always look at in movies or maybe we look at somebody and we say this is a rag to riches story or this is a riches to rag story. There are two extremes that we see in today's world. There are people who have fled the country. Now they are into some hideouts. There are people who are nobody like Ronald Mandal or somebody like this ordinary people whom nobody knew who these people was. Now suddenly all over the internet they are all there. From rags to riches or riches to rag. Now this both these combination are in one chapter. My Bible says there was a time when Jesus wanted to talk about a great sermon. And this when Jesus was talking about it, he was talking about two people. And these two people were living in the same locality, same pin code, maybe same, same area also. My Bible says, in the book of Luke chapter 16, verse 19 to 31, there was a man whose name my Bible does not mention. But my Bible mentions everything about it. The dress that he was wearing, the food that he was eating, the table that he had, the number of brothers that he had. All the details, unwanted details are there. We are curious to know, what is this man's name? So that my pastor will not christen any boy baby in our church. I don't want anybody in my family to have this man's name. We don't have anything. All that we know was a rich man that's all he was so filthy rich how are you saying brother because my bible says he was wearing purple purple during those days during those days there were no dyes at all if you need something if you need some pale colors these pale colors will be the pearl that is found under the ocean and these pearls very rarely you will find a green color pearl very rarely you will find a yellow color pearl very rarely you will find red color or different color pearls and with, the, with these pearls that is how they make the color dresses now, here it talks about purple. Purple is usually made by from snail's blood. The snail's blood is used to make a purple color. Now, look at this man. He must be a six-footer or maybe he must be, uh, even if it is a normal height, 5'7 or 5'8. A man of 5'7, 5'8. Maybe he's 70 kgs, even if he was slim and for his height, 70 kgs is fine. Even if he was that much, he needs at least to 4 to 5 meters. Now, 4 to 5 meters of cloth. Four at least minimum four meters of cloth and 
and for four meters of cloth, how much of snail's blood would have been used to make that purple? It could have been one of the most expensive dresses which nobody would have worn. Nobody could have even thought so many snail's bloods need, blood needs to be there to make this color. But this man, God is talking about the color of the dress that he was wearing. God is talking about the way that he was walking around. God is talking about so many things. But one day, the Bible tells, Lazarus dies. Now God thinks it is okay to mention about the beggar's name. Now what was the dress of the beggar? The dress of the beggar was boils. The dress of the beggar was something that was external on his body, which was sores, which was leaking, which was messy, which was unhygienic, which was absolutely filthy, which was contagious. And the worst part was, God is also mentioning a dog over there. Many brother, my sister, today, dogs are a fashion statement. Today you see all these celebrities, they will have these dogs in their Instagram pictures. Today so many people boast about these dogs, the top 10 costliest breeds in India. Maybe even when you went to, I mean, if you had seen the previous president of America, he had two little two dogs and suddenly these dogs became so popular because it was, it was, it was, it was in the house, it was in the White House. So suddenly nobody knew about this and suddenly this dog has become so famous and then I was reading about a man who says I regret now creating this breed it was a cross breed it was a Labrador and it was a poodle now this man says I regret creating this breed because people have done so much harm to this breed there is absolutely inbreeding in it There's, there are so many dogs which are unhealthy there are so many people yet this dog is the costliest cross breed dog usually we say we don't want a cross breed sir we want only a pedigree we want a pure lineage we don't want inbreeding we want the father from a different home we want the mother from a different home. There are people who talk a lot about dogs, but those days, dogs were something that was absolutely hated. People were, if somebody had to be cursed, if somebody had to be really spoken bad about, that is when they will pull the name of a dog. That is when they will call somebody a dog. And now the Bible says, already the dress that he was wearing was sores, and now there was a dog by next to him. And the Bible says, in a matter of some time, the Bible says, one man dies, and he goes and he rests on Abraham's bosom. On the other side, the rich man also dies. On this earth, he was having all the luxurious life, the lavishness of the life. Anything that he named it, he could have bought it. Anything that he named it, it was already there in his home. Anything that he wanted, even in his wildest dream, it was already there. And the Bible says, both of them die. And then the story tells us, one man from rags, he went to riches. The other man from riches, he went to rags. What was the strange thing about them? Both of them lived the same life. Maybe both of them shared the same pin code, even the same street. But unfortunately, one of them, he was suffering throughout his life. In his all his suffering, he never cursed God for his birth. He never really suspected God. Till the last moment of his life, maybe he was longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Maybe this man, he's looking at the table. At one point of time, he is looking at the rich man's house. He is looking at the rich man walking from one room to the other. He is looking at the food that was served at the table of the rich man. One point of time, this man's eyesight was so powerful that he is looking at the rich man's table. He is looking at the rich man's dress. He is looking at the rich man's food and the meal and that were falling from the table. At the same time, the Bible tells us, after some time, now, this man doesn't have to bother about anything. He doesn't have to peep into anybody's home. Now, the rich man is looking into this man's table. Now, the rich man, it turned the topsy-turvy. In a matter of few months, a few days, a few weeks, the whole situation, the whole scene turns. Now, this man is looking at the beggar Lazarus. He is looking at all his friends. He is looking at people coming, walking around him. And this man says, I have five more brothers. I don't want my state to come to my five brothers. He is now looking at that man and he is looking at that table and he says, Sir, can you please ask him to dip his finger and give me that one drop of water. Look at how situations change. Maybe at one point of time you are suffering. Maybe when you look at your superiors, your brothers, your sisters, somebody and you are now looking at them and saying they are happy, their children are blessed, their husbands are nice, their wives are good, their jobs are secure, their houses are big, the cars they drive are new, everything 
anything about them is nice maybe today you're looking at somebody's window today you're peeping into somebody's house today you're looking at somebody's bank balance today you're looking at somebody's check today you're looking at somebody's take home pay and somewhere you're longing for something but my dear friends hold on to this god what you're doing today is absolutely right today what you are maybe people are looking down on you but very soon things will change from people maybe we are not here to curse anybody it could be your own brother sister your friend your pastor your congregation member your your friend your neighbor anybody we are not here to curse anyone but all that i want to tell you and remind you is things will change that is what paul says everything that happens in our life happens for good and it changes from rags to riches riches to rags there are times we don't know what is going to happen next how is this going to happen brother it's very nice i'm glad that i made it this morning i'm glad i didn't watch it on the youtube and i physically took all the pain to come here but i want to know what exactly will happen this is a very nice message i also want from rags to riches this should be my testimony i should come here and stand here i should talk about my children getting into good jobs i should talk about my spouse being blessed i should talk about no conflicts and my house in harmony peace and there's perfect understanding between the husband and wife i should talk about the children being obedient i should talk about every plan of mine falling in the right place in the right time but what should we do all that you and i need to do is learn from a wise old man the bible says one day abraham is told now take your son the son whom you love and bring him to the mount moriah and then you 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 have to sacrifice him and as abraham and this little boy isaac maybe abraham said when they christened him they said laughter after this boy is born we will not cry anymore we've cried enough when lot had to apart i cried when abimelech came and took away my wife i cried when people around me they were unnecessarily trying to hurt me i cried when i had to go through circumcision i cried due to pain all these things abraham said the 25 years that have gone through there were so much of tears i cried i cried when my wife was fighting with hagar i was crying i didn't know what to do i was like a dolak being up there beaten on both sides i was crying i have cried but finally when god gave isaac abraham and sarah said we've cried enough we've cried before our relatives we've cried before our friends we've cried before these servants we've cried before each other we've cried before god but now we will not cry we will be happy couple we will be a happy parent and we would be living like this forever and one day all this is going to crash land because god did not tell him whether the son is going to come when these two people go even the son is asking him daddy everything is there now what about the sheep what about the sacrificial lamb that is where now abraham locked out looks at his son and he names he christens god god gives the inspiration to christen isaac but now abraham christens god he says can i give you a name god and you know what i'm going to call you he says jehovah jaire in his de- desperate situation in his hopeless situation in a situation that was demanding and crushing him so much in a situation that his heart was absolutely beating at its fullest extent in a situation where he did not know what is next what is going to happen next that is when he smiles at god and says god you have been naming all of us but i want to give you a new name you are going to be god jehovah jaire that's what it says in genesis 22 verse 14 it says abra ham said god will take it whatever is my need whatever is my situation whatever is my confusion whatever is my absolute trouble this morning god will take care he's looking at his son and says don't worry if you ask me son will i come back alive i don't have an answer will i see my mother i don't have an answer will i come back will if you ask me will the old man come back from this mountain without slipping without to- without tossing himself down i don't know son if you ask me will there be a sheep i don't know all that you're asking me are very valid it is logical it is radical everything is true but unfortunately son i don't have any answer in my flesh all that i'm doing is i'm trusting god this god knows what to give me at the right time he knows what to bless me with at the right time he knows what needs to come into my life and what needs to be plucked out of my life at the right time he knows whom to allow into my life how much ever i try to pull people whom to just chop off or chop off from my life this god knows and he says god i'm going to call you jehovah jire and you and i know exactly like what he did the bible says a sheep was coming up towards the thing as this man and his son after christening god when his trust was fully on god one side of the mountain abraham an old man and a young son they were walking on the other side they didn't even know every step that they were they were taking the four steps from abraham and his son there were another four steps from the other side of the mountain as these four steps god was giving an equal answer on the other side four steps on this side four steps on that side. 
oxen and the sheep came up to the mountain and Abraham was and his son were also on the mountain so totally eight steps four from God's side four from this side you and I have seen a seashore where God says God was carrying you God I saw four steps where are the two steps when we have been encouraged by the sermon or encouraged by the story saying that God carried you during those tough times and here God says four steps on this side four steps on the other side God says I will tell you what I'm going to do and after the right time the Bible says now God says Abraham I have absolutely been visible I mean watching you you have proved that you are a man who love me who loves me and now God says now take the sheep and sacrifice my dear brother my dear sister God knows your suffering you are a faithful person Maybe today the world has graded you and they say you've fallen short in some area. Maybe to the worldly eyes, maybe to your spouse, maybe to your children, maybe to your parent, maybe to your neighbor, maybe to your boss, maybe somewhere somebody says, you're not fit. You need to really work more. You need to really grade yourself more. You need to really come up more. You need to educate yourself more. You need to equip yourself more. You need to be more shrewd. You need to be more wise. All that I want to tell you from the scriptures, you cannot imitate what you are. God has fearfully made that's what my bible says he's made you so wonderfully and fearfully when he made you he made as if you are a masterpiece your thought your character your nature the way that you handle people the way that you are how much ever you try you cannot imitate somebody even if you imitate it's going to be only for a short time you even if you try to imitate somebody's voice somebody's mannerism somebody's body actions you cannot be doing it for a long time because you have been formed in certain ways you have been made in certain ways you have been created in certain ways and god knows how to perform his task through you for the right task god knows how to send the right people into this earth god has a plan for you maybe the wife maybe the husband maybe the children maybe the job maybe the church whatever is given into your hand god knows you are the right person if you were not the right person god could have brought in somebody else god knows you are the right person and god never makes mistakes this morning even as you are ready to walk into the next month we are going to remember all the good things that god has blessed us with maybe the past 9 months were not so good maybe there were times when you regretted about certain spending about certain losses in your life about something that really went wrong or maybe you're waiting for an answer and the answer has still not reached you maybe this morning even as you're troubled and even as you're worried you don't know what next but i want to remind you the bible says there was a time when abraham christened god and he said god you're going to be jehovah jireh in my life the next month that we are going to step into maybe 9 months god has not done something for us let us depend on god who else can we depend on nobody is worth being dependent on nobody is really that worth that you can trust them 100% there will be some guy in them there will be something that is wrong in them nobody is 100% as good as god rather than trusting a human being let us start trusting god let us tell god okay lord 9 months nothing has happened but the 10th month that i'm stepping into i'm expecting something from you that's what abraham did a wise old man he's no old age but still he says god i don't know god i don't have an answer needs are pressing me my heart is thumping my son whom i've been watching i don't know how it is going to be a life without him i don't know anything about what's going to happen next but i am going to trust in you this morning let us confess that let this god whom you come in search of he will be jehovah jireh in your life you may not know how to pray you may not to even know what is needed for the next month but this morning we are going to remember paul says i don't even know how to pray but i know one thing the holy spirit intercedes and this is the holy spirit that wants to talk to you and remind you saying that god will be with you to carry you through let's close our eyes and pray maybe this morning you've come here with a heavy heart maybe you don't know what is going to happen next but even as you took your steps this morning god has started preparing something for you maybe you see at the week ahead of you and you say it's a mixed week there is a holiday there is a first first of a month my salary is credited for few month few people could have say could be saying this so many things from your side but beyond all these things i want to remind you there's a time when john broke down he wept that's what the bible says thinking that god is helpless in heaven but very soon they came to him and say why are you weeping sir please don't weep though it looks as if god can't help it looks as if he looks like a lamb that was slain but he is a lamb who's worthy they came and assured him and they came and told him everything will be all right similarly this morning what you're troubled about what you're worried about maybe about your son about your daughter about your children about your job about your own health 
about your parents about your situation at your work about something that is pending about the result that you are waiting for maybe nothing is in your hand and you saying it is beyond my hand it is only god that is the situation in your life now that is what happened in in john's case also only god and at times maybe he thought even god can't help but they assured him don't worry don't underestimate god this god is enough to do anything for you on earth or in heaven the same words that god john was spoken to god is reminding you brother god is reminding you sister this god whom you have come in search of he is worthy he surely worthy to carry you through god be with each one of us present over here and lord we are frail in our strength we are absolutely disturbed about many things that have gone wrong we don't know why certain things happen we are not we are not sure why certain things are still not happening but one thing that we know you are in control of our life nothing happens without your permission and will and all that has happened it could be even worst disasters in our life has happened because there is something nice that's coming our way we believe in the scriptures we believe in the words that the bible has taught us and lord we know we love you and all that has happened has happened for good be with us lord and assure us safely into the new month in jesus precious name we pray amen